Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. days, the early 1800s in France, you could get five years for stealing a loaf of bread. And every time you tried to escape, they'd tack on four more years and rivet an iron collar around your neck. The man who suffered so was a peasant called Jean Valjean. One loaf of bread to keep his sister and her seven children from starving. No wonder he hated society when they took off his irons, handed him a yellow passport opened the gates, and set him free. I knew Valjean. He thought he was above the law. He could never understand transgressions must be punished. Inspector Javert is my name, Prefecture of France. No criminal anywhere in the country can escape me. I have an uncanny sixth sense in the pit of my stomach. It's never failed me yet. An evil man, no matter how long he is in prison, never changes, cannot change. No more than a leopard can change his markings. I led Valjean to the main gate. He was counting the money he had earned in prison. That was... What? One hundred nine francs, fifteen sous. I've counted it twice. I'm glad you haven't forgotten how to count. I've forgotten nothing. Not you, Javert. Not the rats, not the darkness, not the bars. I've been here for 19 years. And by my count, the state owes me 171 francs. That's the way you figure it. Why am I cheated? Did you take into account all the Sundays and the holidays? Huh? I'm not paid for that. I was here, nevertheless. No one is paid on Sundays and holidays. The prefecture of police doesn't pay me either. That's all right for you. You're free. The day you don't work, you see the sun. The sun is for those who don't steal. The gate is open. Go. 109 francs ought to last you. Have you relatives? I had a widowed sister 19 years ago, and she had children. By now, they could have starved to death. Remember, Valjean, no more stealing. Because if you break one law, turn one hair of your head the wrong way, Javert will be there right behind you. Make no mistake. The next sentence you receive will it be for life? I wanted to shut off those 19 years, close that part of my life the way the gates of Toulon prison closed behind me. I was a nobody, the yellow passport, which means, I'll tell you what it means. It was a hot day. I'd walked 15 miles before the sun was high. I saw men in front of a building. You! You look like a strong man. You want work? Yes, I'll work. You look stronger than most. Get up there on that wagon and lift the barrels down. All right. Two men will carry them into the distillery. All, right. All these barrels up here? Everyone. Hey, you're strong and fast. Hey, look sharp, the rest of you. The new man will have everything unloaded before you start moving. He's doing the work of ten of you. Well, good morning. Who is the new man? I don't know, officer. He just appeared. Strong, isn't he? I haven't seen him around Dijon before. Yeah, sometimes I'm lucky. I get good people. Mm. All right, the rest of you move. It's what is worth in gold, eh? Did he tell you where he was from? What are all these questions? He's working his head off. What's his name? I did not ask him. He did not ask my name. I did not ask him. Well, I want to talk to him. Call him over. Ah, your police are all the same. 
There's nothing better to do but interfere with hard-working men. Oh, uh, yeah. You up on the wagon. Come down here. Am I doing something the wrong way? No, 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 no. This is a gendarme of Dijon. He wants to talk to you. Don't keep him long, officer. Time is money. What is your name? Uh, Valjean. Is that your first name, Valjean? No. Jean Valjean. Oh, yeah. Where did you work last? Toulon. Oh, uh, Toulon, eh? Huh? Mm. May I see your papers? Mm. Huh? Papers? Yes, it's identity papers. Uh, this is all I have. That's what they gave me. Ah, uh, yes, a yellow passport, sir. You served time in the Toulon prison, huh? Yes, but it's over now. I hope so. But you had better be careful. It didn't dawn on me what that yellow passport meant until the end of the day, when I lined up with the others for my money. I said to one of them, standing in front of me, How much did I earn? How much? For a day's work. Huh? Don't you know? I've never worked here before. Uh, a man of your strength, you probably never had to take so little money. Well, how much? How much money do I get? Thirty sous. <laughs> Isn't that a crime for all this work? Next. Move along. I have to take it and I have to thank you. Next. Hello, Auguste. Will I be working tomorrow? Yes, six o'clock. Here, it is your thirty sous. Thank you. Next. Oh, it is you. Will I be working tomorrow? Uh, no, no, Valjean, we are all full up. We have all the hands we need. What? You don't want me? What, I... I did something wrong? Look, I am not saying you are not a good worker, but uh, there is a matter of the passport. Huh. Because it's yellow. It means you have committed a crime. A, a crime? I stole one loaf of bread for my sister to save seven little ones from starving. I paid 19 years of my life for that crime. Believe me, I understand. What do you understand? You give them 19 years of your life, and they give you a yellow passport. They say to you, be honest, don't steal, go to work. But they won't let you work. And you keep on paying for that one loaf of bread. Give me my money. Here you are. What is this? Fifteen sous? Everyone else has paid thirty sous. So I'm paid fifteen. Is that what I get for doing the work of three others? Valjean, I do not like your tone of voice. Careful what you say or you will find yourself behind bars. I was worth my weight in gold until you saw that yellow passport. It is you and those like you who break our backs and our spirit. But the time will come when God will punish you. If you're not punished, then there is no God. It had occurred to me, Inspector Javard, Prefecture of Police, that of all those who had served time at Toulon for their misdeeds, Jean Valjean had not repented. There was about him a sternness, a look that spoke of hatred. For the very society that had tried to reform him. I thought I would follow him at a distance. Bearded, wearing ill-fitting rags, he walked along the same coast road Napoleon had walked from Cannes to Paris just seven months before. A little while later, he entered the door of the three dolphins. Yes? What do you want? Supper and a bed. Oh, nothing easier if you have the money. I have money in my purse. Well, in that case, I am at your service. I'm just making the evening meal. Go inside. Take your knapsack off and rest yourself. Have you come a long way? I have. Hmm. Go inside. I'll tell you when the food is ready. Don't forget. I haven't eaten all day. George. Come here. You see that man who walked in the kitchen door? I want you to take this note to the mayor's office. Go at the front door. I don't look at the man as you go. Are you 
I'm afraid the boy has just brought me some bad news. I'd like to put my things in the room you have for me. Clean up a little before I eat. I cannot make room for you. What? What do you mean? Oh, I'm not going to cheat you. Oh, here, you can have the money in advance. I have the money. I have no room for you. What? No room anywhere? In the attic? No. Well, in the stable? I can't do that. Why not? The horses take up all the room. Oh, don't worry yourself. A corner in the loft, a truss of straw. I'll be all right. We'll see to that after supper. I can't give you any supper. But you said... No, I, I don't think you understand me. I've been on my legs since sunrise. Walking without stopping. Look, I can pay. I, I demand from you food. I have none. What? No food? What's this? All this is ordered. By whom? By all the men in there. They always eat here. How many are there? Twelve. There's enough food here for twenty. Look, innkeeper, I don't, I don't know what you're up to. First you promised me bed and food, and then there's none. This is a public place. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I shall remain here. Listen, you. You get out of here. Be off. But, but why? I, why do you say that? Don't you think I know who you are? What? Your name is Jean Valjean. You've come from 19 years of hard labor in prison. When you came in the kitchen door and not the front door, I suspected something. So... I sent a note to the mayor's office. And this is the answer I received. Can you read? I'll... I'll just go inside and pick up my knapsack. I am accustomed to be polite with everybody. So don't give me any trouble. <laughs> humiliated like that to be turned out of one door and half an hour later when I walked into another inn to find that word had been there ahead of me <laughs> what? <laughs> to be laughed at and then dark as it was to see people in the street pointing at me Tapers were lit, lanterns, men gathered together as if I were some evil beast to be driven from town. I had no idea how far it was to the next town. All I knew was that I was in a world of people who shunned me as if I were a leper. Clouds covered the moon. And I staggered headlong into a sign fainted from the blow. When I came to, I could barely make out the words. Five kilometers to the town of Digne. Oh. The genius of Victor Hugo, who created the characters we are meeting, is his ability to hold the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature and scorn her own image. Wrongly imprisoned, Jean Valjean now finds himself abroad in a universal jail from which there seems to be no escape. I shall return shortly with Act Two. <laughs> Our curtain rises on the second act of The Thief and the Bishop. We have met the thief, one Jean Valjean, who traded 19 years of his life to bring bread to his sister and her seven little ones. Though he was cast out and mocked in his wanderings, Valjean had no idea his movements were being watched by Inspector Javert, the roving prefect of police. We have a saying at the prefecture. There is no such thing as an ex-convict. There are those who dispute that assertion. Some ignorant, some well-meaning. Among them a certain bishop in the town of Digne, Known to all as Monsignor Welcome. This bishop lives with his sister. 
And on one Saturday afternoon, he was writing out his Sunday sermon. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Your grace. And if I have prophetic powers and understanding, all the mysteries and all knowledge... I I regret to interrupt you at your Sunday sermon, Bishop. I regret it also, my dear sister. Kindly be quiet until I have completed this phrase from St. Paul. And... If I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Now, what is it, my sister? I never try to interrupt you when you are preparing the Sunday lesson. You try. But you, you, you know Aristide Dupin, who is condemned to death for murder? Yes. Tomorrow is the day of the execution. May the Lord have mercy on his soul. The prison chaplain is ill. Oh? So they sent for the cure, and he said, it's no business of mine. It's not my place to comfort this man. The cure was right. Oh, how can you say that? That there should be no one at the man's side on his last moment on earth? Oh, I never thought I'd hear such a thing from you. The cure was right. It was not his place. It is mine. Aristide Dupin knew he had sinned. What quarrel had driven him to kill his neighbor, we didn't talk about. I spent the day and night with him, forgetting sleep or food, for at sunrise he was to be guillotined. Gradually, where the condemned man had seen only darkness, he began to see light. Why did I wait this long, Monsignor? Welcome to find such a friend as you. My son, the church was always there. The doors were always open. That you, a bishop, should ride in this open cart with me to the guillotine. Look at them. I can even see some old friends of mine in the street. Their prayers are with you. You, Dupin, walk on to the platform. I shall accompany him to the scaffold, if you do not mind. (laughs) There's only room for one under the guillotine. (laughs) Before you lower the hood over his face and tie his hands behind his back, I would like a few last words with Dupin. Suit yourself, Your Grace. Aristide, do you remember what we spoke of during the night? Every word. Love bears all things. Believes all things. Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Yes, endures all things. That if I really believe in the love of God, I will be forgiven. Without question. Love is the only bond between life and the hereafter. Hold it fast, and you will be able to overcome the next moments. Father... Suddenly, I'm not afraid of dying anymore. Be not afraid. You are absolved of your sins. Of all those standing here in the marketplace, watching, those of the law upon this scaffold, and the headsmen who will pull the knife to the top of the guillotine, you, Aristide, are the most fortunate. For a very short time from now, you will know the infinite which is denied to all of us. I am deeply sorry my friend died at my hands. It was an accident. I did not mean to kill him. So, brother, you were with him until the end of his life? Until the beginning. But I cannot condone the method. I cannot condone the punishment of man by man by the guillotine. No, my sister, when one has seen a knife fall, one is never the same. The guillotine is not neutral, and it doesn't allow you to be neutral. I discovered today the scaffold is not wood, not steel or ropes. It is the accomplice of the executioner... 
It is a species of monster manufactured by the judge and the carpenter. I pray I have helped one soul bear the pain, but that headless man has left me with the terror. Oh, brother, who could that be at this time of night? Time of night? It is hardly late. You told me dinner would be ready in ten minutes. I know everyone in the village, their footsteps, their hands at the door. Oh, but, but, but not that one. You're probably a traveler who has lost his way. You go back to the kitchen. I'll open the door. Is it safe? I'm coming, I'm coming. Yes, my friend. My name is Jean Valjean. I've spent 19 years in prison. I've been traveling for four days. Today I've walked 12 leagues. I am very interested in your story. But so is every insect and night moth by this door. Come inside so I can close the door and keep our flying friends outside. This evening I came into town. I went to the inn, but I was sent away because of this. It's the same everywhere. You see? Mm Mm-hmm. Yellow passport. I went to another inn. The same welcome. I tried to sleep in the doorway, and a good woman pointed out your house and said, go and knock there, you will be welcome. Did I hear him say he has a yellow passport? Ah, uh, m- my sister. She takes an interest in political matters. He said that, didn't he? Please, place another fork and knife and plate on the table. Your Grace, may I speak with you a moment? What? What? Over here in the corner. Why are you stacking another place for dinner? Man is hungry. I prefer him to eat from a plate with the proper utensils. Uh, I'll try to find some future. As you like, but be quick. Now, my friend, a bit of wine, yes? To relax you? Uh, sir, what, what, what sort of an inn is this? I, I have money. A hundred and nine francs and thirty sous. I can pay. May, may I sit? I don't know what has kept you standing all this time. Uh, I'm very tired. I'm very hungry. Will you let me stay here? This is no inn. Didn't you tell him this is no inn? Sister, did you lay another knife and fork as I asked you? There is something else I must talk to you about. Something else? What do we do about the silver spoons, the platters, the candlesticks inherited from great aunt Sophie? What in the world are you talking about? Look at him. Just look at him. I thought you'd tell him he could spend the night. We should all be murdered in our beds. Valjean, you are staring out the window. Why haven't you helped yourself to the brandy? Here, let me. Here, one for you. And a smaller one for me. To your health. A lady, uh, I didn't quite understand you. Your housekeeper? My sister. She takes care of me. She's worried. Drink slowly. Take deep breaths. You're going to eat well. Yes. It's too much for me to understand. I was 30. Now I'm 49. And they tell you the gates are open. You're free. (laughs) Free? Wherever I go, I'm turned against or turned out. And now you're telling me all is well. And that I can eat at your table. Sister, will you put clean sheets on the bed in the alcove? It's all true. You're, 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 you're going to let me stay. My huh? good sir, we shall eat directly and your bed will be ready for you. You call me sir. The others, dog, they call me. And worse. Come along, Jean. We eat in the kitchen. You really mean I am to stay? But you're, you're worthy people. I have money. I'll pay handsomely. By the way, what is your name, Mr. Landlord? I, I will pay anything you please, for you are a worthy man. I am a bishop living in this house. Huh? A bishop? A 
How stupid of me. I, di I didn't notice your cassock. You don't want me to pay for food and the night's lodging? No, no, no. You keep your money. How long did it take you to earn your 109 francs? 19 years. I stole a loaf of bread from my sister and her seven children. They had no food. I don't know to this day if they're alive. Nineteen years for a loaf of bread? No, five years for the bread. Fourteen more when I tried to run away. You kept escaping and they kept bringing you back. It's a sin against nature to take a man out of the sun and shut him up in a cell with no light. Years and years of black night. My poor man, you must have suffered in darkness. I learned to hate in darkness. But why did you attempt to escape so many times? It only lengthened your sentence. Instinct, instinct, not reason. When a caged bird suddenly sees an opening, it doesn't think it will be caught and returned to the cage. It flies out. My instinct said, run away. Too bad. You should have listened to reason. Reason? You, you don't understand. Reason disappears. The temptation is too violent. Temptation. Put yourself in my place. One day, after months, years of groping in darkness, you're suddenly placed in a cell with a window, a square of gray sky. A little bird sits there. You have to see, is it really a bird? I took a big wooden table, just like this. Yeah. I climbed up on it. The bird saw me. I flew away. Stop him! Stop him! You see, I'm close to the window now. With my hands, I could bend those bars just enough. I could fly away, too. Oh, my, my, well, what am I doing? John! I, I, John, come and I'm sit so down. Dear. I will not remain in this room. No, I... Monsignor, <laughs> this time you have gone too far. You have invited a madman to eat with us. One should not judge Madame Magloire too harshly. Beljean the outcast, now society's victim, has forgotten how to behave with normal people. For 6,000 nights, he has slept on planks, existed in cages, in dungeons, his foot welded to a cannonball. The bishop is aware of these contradicting emotions in this suffering man. His attempt to restore sanity and order in Valjean's spiritual house is part of the extraordinary third act, which I shall bring you shortly. It was more fear than anger that made the bishop's sister storm out of the kitchen. It wasn't long, however, before Madame Magloire returned with broom and cloths and woe betides to anyone who might be standing where she wished to clean and sweep. I, I am sorry, Bishop. I'm sorry, Mademoiselle. I have broken all the dishes, every single one. That's what Give you me. get for feeding such a brute. No, no, I, I'd have lost my head. Sister, I, it was a I, violent I, emotion <laughs> born out of all his memories. Be charitable. Forgive him, sister. He is not to be blamed. Look, the man is weeping. We must help this man. I behave like an animal. Can you forgive me? You lived in a zoo for a long time. Sister, there is not enough light on the table. Would you fetch the two candlesticks from my room? I am not the one to forgive, Jean. I have seen too much of poverty and injustice. If there is to be reproach or judgment, I leave that in more qualified hands. Oh, sister, bring the other plates, knives and forks. The silver spoons and forks and platters. The stool will get cold. Well, it's all my fault. I... I beg you, sir, take your seat by the stove. My sister makes the best oxtail ragout between here and Paris. Well, Jean and I talked until late. And when I awoke in the morning, he had gone. I always take a turn around my garden before breakfast, admiring the flowers. Monsignor, Monsignor, I have been looking high and low for the silver vase. What an excellent idea. We'll take a few of these gladiolas, 
the red ones and the white ones and bring some of the garden indoors. Your grace does not understand me. The base has disappeared. And the knife and the forks and the spoons and the two platters. Oh, look. Look up there. Do you see where the coping on the top of the wall has been torn away? Oh, that is the way he went. Well, why wouldn't he go out the gate? Oh, the gate squeaks. He's stolen all our silver. Sister, was that silver really ours? Uh, uh, I am speechless. How can you be so calm? Those few pieces of silver, were they ours? By what right? By inheritance? I was in the wrong. I held back this silver which rightfully belonged to the poor. I should have sold it and given the money to the needy. Everything should be given to the poor? Everything? Look at you. How threadbare your cassock. Your sandals are always broken. Have you ever in your entire life worn a new pair of shoes? Not since I was ordained. That is exactly what I am talking about. The silver belonged to the poor. Who's this Jean Valjean? A poor and abused man. I tried to speak to him of faith. But what the silver could buy for him was all he could understand. I don't want you thinking that I can only eat with silver. But you? What will you eat with now? Well, the pewter, of course. Pewter smells. I have enough wooden spoons. <sighs> Breakfast will be ready in ten minutes. Thank you, my dear. Why don't you comfort yourself with the knowledge that you have given to the needy? You see what comes of your open door, Monsignor. Welcome. The world laughs at such welcomes. No, not really. I have the opportunity to open my house. They do not. Well, I simply cannot accept it as calmly as you. It is an affront. My dear, I am just as guilty. If he has sinned, it was I who put the temptation in his grasp. I was the little bird in the cell window that showed him freedom. Besides, do we know that Jean Valjean has walked off with the silver? Why are you letting the man escape? I didn't like him from the moment I saw him. Would you pass me some more bread? Would you be surprised, my dear, if it were our friend who has returned? I'll go. Good morning, gentlemen. Ah, so oh, they caught him. I'm not surprised. Uh, Monsignor, I would not have disturbed you, but uh, before proceeding to the gendarmerie, I thought it best to come here first. Do you know this man? Do I know Jean Valjean? Mm. <laughs> that is like asking me, do I know my right hand? John, what have you done that this policeman holds you by the collar? Uh, we found some silver knives and forks and spoons in the vase and uh, silver platters in his knapsack, and I remembered they belong to you, Your Grace. Well, what about the candlesticks, John? I know we didn't find any candlesticks on him. Of course not. Here they are, still standing on the sideboard. John, I gave you the candlesticks as well. They are also silver. You could get at least 200 francs for them. Why didn't you take them along with the rest of the silver? Look at him staring at you as if you've lost your head. Bishop, are you feeling all right? Never better, sister. You mean to go through with this play acting? Sister, it is my turn to ask you what you are talking about. If you will excuse me, I, I have to go out and do some marketing. Good day to you. Her woman's work is never done. My sister is an excellent housekeeper. Yes, yes. Then if I understand correctly, Monseigneur, what this man told us is uh, true. You didn't believe him? Well, we saw him crossing some fields in a great hurry. He looked as if he were running away, so I stopped him and searched him. 
One can hardly be blamed uh, to have certain suspicions to find all the bishop's silver in a stranger's knapsack. Of course, he uh, denied everything. I'm sure he told you it was given to him by an old priest at whose house he passed the night. Mm. I see it all. So naturally, being in the investigative arm of the law, you brought him back here to confirm his story. I don't blame you. But as it happens, Jean spoke the truth. I did give him the silver. You made a mistake. Uh, well, uh, in that case, I uh, suppose I should let him go on. Oh, most certainly. Huh? Is, is this true? Well, I'm free? Uh, don't you understand? There are no charges against you. Uh, your grace, forgive the intrusion. A natural mistake. I would offer you wine, but I know officers of the law do not drink while on duty. Oh, <laughs> well, I thank you again. Uh, I shall leave him with you, your grace. Good day. Oh, hey, I beg, uh, beg your pardon, madame. I was just coming back. Go, go, goodbye. It's a pleasure. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Uh, may, may I have a word? I thought you were going out to the store. Jean, excuse me one moment. I shall be leaving myself. No, no. No, you are not. Step into the garden if you wish. But I don't want you to run away again. I may have something for you which could be of help. Yeah. Uh, I'll wait outside. I cannot leave you alone with that man. I cannot remember you making such a scene when I spent an entire night... With the poor wretch who was guillotined the day before yesterday. He was in prison, not wandering about our garden. Oh, my dear, try to understand. An opportunity like this may never come again. I want to save his soul. I want to give him self-respect. By giving him all the silver. It is a bond between us. Now you stay in here. If you like, you can watch us in the garden. But mind you, don't move the curtains. I don't wish him to feel he's being spied upon. My sister's worried for my safety. You don't despise me after what I did? No. You don't despise a thief? I told you. An ex-convict from Toulon. You didn't have to warn me. You see, this is not my house, but the house of Christ... That door there, the front door, it doesn't ask whether a man who enters has a name, only if he has a sorrow. I understand what tortures you. The world has closed its doors to you. You are suffering. But I did not receive you in my house. No one is at home here but the man who has need. In fact, Jean, you... I'm more at home here than I myself. And all that I have belongs to you. <laughs> I, I have never heard such words. I knew right away who you were. It didn't matter what you told me. Is that true? You knew my name? Yes. You are my brother. Uh, I cannot take the silver. Not the candlesticks. Nothing. You will take the silver, Jean Valjean. My brother, you no longer belong to evil, but to good. I have bought your soul. I withdraw it from bitterness and anguish and black thoughts. And I give it to God. Valjean hoisted his knapsack upon his back and left the good bishop's house. The sun rose and fell. Night passed, but Jean Valjean did not leave the town of Digne. Early the next morning, the lamplighter saw him on his knees in front of the church, weeping. As the barnyard signaled daylight, Jean Valjean arose and walked north. It would be many years before he returned to this town. I shall be back shortly.
next broadcast will be part two of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, celebrating the start of our ninth season. Let me leave you with the simple words of the poor bishop. Never let us fear robbers or murderers. Prejudices are the real robbers. Vices, the true murderers. The great dangers are within ourselves, not to our bodies, but to our souls. Our cast included Alexander Scorby, Bernard Grant, Mandel Kramer, Joan Shea, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel.